Welcome guys back to the channel. This is going to be the follow-up video of the valve cover removal in which I'm going to remove the exhaust camshaft. I'll share tips and tricks how to remove it. So now let me switch the camera and tell a little bit about the car. So this is a Mazda 6 Estate Automatic 2.2 Skyactiv diesel. It came for carbon cleaning, valve cover slash exhaust camshaft inspection and also like oil strainer inspection. The reason or the symptoms were it threw the fault code and the car because it is automatic during the shifts it was jerking and shaking and it didn't shift up until 3000 rpm. Um, so upon disassembling the, the car, the engine or stripping the engine at this point, we discovered that the camshaft is worn the oil shower is already removed. I'll show you the oil showers. So this is the oil shower. It is held by six eight millimeter bolts where those holes are. So let me show you that. I won't include it that in the DIY removal. So it is held here, 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 down there, um, there and there. It's fairly simple. Basically use an eight millimeter socket to remove it. Um, so yeah, it, this is the carbon build up of it. I'm not 100% sure of the mileage though. I believe maybe around 80,000 on the clock. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how to um, remove the exhaust camshaft and how to refit it uh, without removing the timing cover and the timing chain components and all that. Then had already removed the oil pan and check the condition of the strainer. I'll crawl underneath and show you that, uh, like how the strainer looks like. It doesn't need replacement because it is clean. So now how to, how to remove the exhaust camshaft. First, what you need to do, you need to align the two camshafts, the exhaust and the intake one um, to the TDC of the first cylinder or piston. How you do that, I'll, I'll grab two camshafts from out of the which are out of the car and I'll try to explain it here or maybe on the bench so that you can understand it better. So here is two camshafts. I believe both are from that car. Um, the, the intake camshaft is definitely. Anyway, that doesn't matter here. So I wanted to show you like what you need to do. You need to align the, the camshafts at the top that center of the piston of the piston number one. Um, first, let me clear like what is the worn exhaust camshaft or what to check when I say it is worn because sometimes people don't know what that is. So basically, as you see, it has leaps. The camshaft lobe has leaps, meaning material is missing from in here. So that's supposed to be flash or a flat. Um, if you have a look from this angle, basically because if that material is missing, it's not pushing anymore the rocker arms down. So the valves are not opening as they should. If it is, there is a request, I can explain how the, the valve was that the, the Skyactiv engine works, what's the Skyactiv technology, how the valves open, when they open, this and that. So let me know in the comment section if you, if you would be interested in that. But basically now how to align the two camshafts so what I'm going to do here, you will need to do that inside the cylinder head. So basically both of the camshafts has like marks. This one, the intake camshaft has two dots as a mark and the in, uh, exhaust camshaft has only one. I'll try to show that it's there. So I always, what I do, I just grab a marker and highlight them. Once I will highlight them, you will see that better. And I'm going to do that on those which are still inside the cylinder head. And the, as I said, the intake camshaft has two dots, one, two. So basically the single dot, the teeth has to fall inside between those two dots. So basically it will look something like, um, something like this. So now let me mark them, just how, how I mark them. Um, the 
The single dot is fairly obvious, so I just always highlight the teeth where the single dot is, like that. And in here, I highlight between the two dots. So I'm going to do exactly that, highlighting the dots or the marks on the two camshafts, which are still in the cylinder head, and I make them turn into each other, and I'll show you how to do that. By the way, here is our camshaft collection. This is only exhaust camshafts. So I have marked the two camshafts. One is here and the other one is there. And now I'm going to ask Daniel to turn the crankshaft. So how you turn it? Basically by the crankshaft bolt, use a 21 mm socket, extension ratchet, and you can turn it. So I'm going to ask him to turn and let him know when they are, when they are turned into each other. Yeah, you can go. A bit more. A bit more. A bit more. Um, yeah, a bit more. 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 Okay. Now, as you can see, the line is straight, so they are um, they are at the top that center. So the sorry, the piston is at top that center. There, that's how they should be. Again, the marking is not necessary. You don't need to use a marker. It is just a lot easier for me to see it visually when they are aligned because sometimes these uh, sprockets or like gear wheels are so dirty you can't even see the dots. Um, so always like use a piece of rug or cloth and clean it. Now the next step, what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark the chain and the big sprocket on the end of the exhaust camshaft. I'll tell, tell you why. The reason is so that I know the relation of the chain to that sprocket in case, let's say, for some reason, the chain moves or the sprocket moves inside the chain. So I don't lose the, uh, the relation, the two, two parts to each other. I'll mark them and show you where I usually mark them. So I have marked the, the sprocket. As you can see, I put two lines to add two spaces. So basically, let's say if the sprocket turns while I'm replacing the camshaft or the chain moves or something like that, I can still see where, or what was the orientation uh, of the sprocket and the chain to each other. And also just to make sure I used two zip ties so I zip tied the chain to the sprocket. Also, Peter from Kennedy's Garage, what he does, he uses, um, he fabricated a tool for himself. Basically, what he secures here to the to the cylinder head bolts or the valve cover bolts. So he, he fixes it to the cylinder head with the valve cover bolts. And basically it, it has two pins. So he just slides the sprocket to, the, to, the, to that tool, which he's made. Um, the reason I don't do it, I'll show you in a bit. So the reason why I don't make that tools, because this is the welding skills of my father and my one is neither better. I don't even know how to weld. So that's the sole reason um, why I don't make that tool because I can't weld. Um, and I just found that the zip tie method is fine for me. It works, it, it's fine. Um, and also like I got a question in the comment section, like what size is the thread? and the thread pitch of this injector puller. So let me check that out for you. We bought that scale, as you can see, where we can check nuts and bolts, the size of them. So I know for fact, this is a size eight, and I believe it is size eight, and the thread pitch is one point 25, so let me check that if I'm correct. No, it doesn't want to go, so let me check the eight by one. Yeah, this will be it. So if anybody wants to know the injector puller, what you will need to do for the 2.2 skyactive diesel, it is eight by one. Also, if you are interested, I will link, I will leave a link for this tool 
in my in the description of the video and now the next step is to remove the exhaust camshaft bolt which is sitting there yeah that one so for that you will need i recommend a long size 17 millimeter spanner and you will need a 23 millimeter spanner to hold the camshaft here so i will ask them to get out from underneath the car and help me um, recording or maybe he can know i will ask actually him to do the job for me this time so then please what i'm doing uh, remove the bolt from the from the camshaft with what <laughs> with the tools <laughs> here are here are the tools my friend let me go from different angle And let's see how strong Dan is. Very good job. So now you can undo it by hand. You don't have too much space there, but it is doable. I believe so. Sometimes. So yeah, undo the bolt all the way. The bolt is off. Now you can slide off the sprocket from the camshaft by your hand. Yeah, it is off. Now what you need to do, you need to remove the journals, the, the camshaft journals. Um, I always do it in the order as I put them back. So I remove these two bolts first. So basically first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, you will need to remove both of the bolts, like all four bolts, because this is like a, like a big journal. Um, you can start it by just the hand tool, so the ratchet, and then you can use uh, the power tool to completely remove the, the bolts. And let me show you then how to remove the journals, because sometimes they, they just stuck on to the, the double pins. The bolts are removed and sometimes the journals they stuck on like i can't remove them by hand this one i could so how i remove the ones which are stuck on no big deal use pliers and on the top of it just try to wiggle it from side to side and pull by pull and pull it upwards the same time you can repeat this, this step on all four no one two three all three remaining ones and then you can remove the exhaust camshaft i'll show like a little trick how to remove it the easiest and quickest way so how i remove it if then comes from this side so basically as you can see that this camshaft lobe is pointing up this one is pointing down i want to want the last camshaft lobe to point out so i can easily slide uh, out from its position from from the journal so i just lift a little bit just lift a little bit the camshaft so now it is separated from from the inlet or intake camshaft and now i'm just starting to turn till i see it is pointing up so the lobe is pointing up and I just pull it that way sometimes it got stuck on the rocker arm and that's it that's how you remove the quickest way the exhaust camshaft So once the camshaft is removed, I remove the, the rocker arms and then the tappets. So it's, they are fairly easy, basically either the, the, the big rocker arms just pull out the same with the intake rocker arm. And now let me talk a little bit about tappets. Usually like the four underneath the, the, the thicker rocker arms, they tend to wear. And if you have a look at it, that tip is a little bit spiky compared to this one so this is more flush flat and that is like spiky i'll try to show you like better once i remove them and how i remove them i use a magnet um, and stick it on the on the head of it and just wiggle and they come out so that's how i remove it i'm going to remove all eight and i'm going to check 
all eight, um, if they are okay, I'll tell you how to check them and what to look for. Here are two tappets. One is good, the left is good, and the right is bad. I'm not 100% sure if you will be able to see it, but the tip of the right one is a bit deformed, it's a bit spiky. Can't really see it. I think now you can a tiny bit, so it's not as round as it's supposed to be. So we always change at least those four, which are underneath the thicker rocker arms, and then always we check all remaining if they are soft. So basically, what that means, you shouldn't be able to compress them. This one is good, so it's firm, stiff. This one, this one is stiff too, but the top, the head is de the deformed. Um, so there is video on my channel, like how to clean them and bleed them. Feel free to watch that. So it needs cleaning and bleeding before refitting, even if it is good. So this was it for this video. Hope you learned something new again and it was valuable. It was instructional. It was good enough so you can yourself now remove the camshaft if you want. Um, let me know in the comment section if you would like to see how to refit the cam camshaft. Actually, I may do a video on that one. And I believe the next one will be on the oil pan, like how to remove the oil pan uh, and replace the strainer. Um, so yeah. Feel free to give us a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe, give us a uh, super thanks if you can afford or order through the Amazon affiliate links I put in the description of the video. You can buy from there like lots of uh, diagnostic tools. I've got listings of, of them there. Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you very much for watching and see you soon. And the very next one, take care and bye bye guys.